Welcome to D-Lab everyone. On the bench today we have a pair of Dynakit model PAS tube type preamps for home stereo use. This one I just picked up at a swap meet a couple weeks ago and it's going to need some power supply work and there's some other things that have been interrupted that I need to take care of. This one is a customer unit. It was recently sent out for repair. When it came back the power supply wasn't exactly completed. So both units are going to require power supply work. Let me show you what's going on. Alright, we will start with the PAS unit that I picked up at the Kalamazoo Hamfest. I opened up the unit at the swap meet and noticed all the tubes are gone. There was also some miscellaneous wires hanging out inside. I really wasn't too concerned about that, but what I really was concerned about is the power transformer because it still has the old crusty 12 volt DC rectifier system and the original filter cap. So let me show you a real quick trick so you can verify your power transformer is good without having to go underneath the chassis. Well, here we go. I'm going to show you the little quick trick for testing this power transformer without having to interrupt the PAS preamp. Number one, remove all the tubes. In this case, they're already gone, so that wasn't a problem. Step two, you're going to take your meter on AC volts. We're going to look at the pins of the 12X4 socket. So pins three and four has the 12 volt winding coming off of the power transformer. So it is present. Now you have a center tapped high voltage output coming off this transformer. So take one lead, go to chassis, and the high voltage is on pins one and pin six. And you can see we have the high voltage present. So the power transformer is good. The other thing that I'm going to have to deal with is somebody mounted a chassis mount fuse holder on the rear panel, which is a great idea because these things didn't have fuse protection. But when I get ready to install my power supply board, that fuse holder is going to interfere. I'll deal with that later. Now that I've verified that the power transformer is good, we'll be installing the D-Lab power supply board in this position and now you can see why the fuse holder is going to be in the way. Alright, let's move on to the customer unit. Here's the inside of the customer unit. You can see the circuit boards look really nice, they've been recapped. The power supply has also been recapped but only partially. So this module converts the 12 volt AC coming off this transformer to 12 volt DC to power the four 12AX7 filaments. So this module is replacing this old cap assembly that you see in the original PAS units. But when you're in here changing out power supply caps, you shouldn't stop there. You need to change this cap too. This is the main filter cap for the high voltage of this transformer. So the 12X4 rectifies it to DC, goes through that cap, and then that high voltage goes to the 12AX7s. So this cap is actually the original filter. It did not get changed for some reason. But we're going to eliminate all those problems by removing this board and putting one of my modules in its place. This cap board replaces both the high voltage filter cap and these low voltage DC cap assemblies. So I'm going to start by replacing the power supply in the customer unit. I've showed this process several times in the past, but there is the new board installed and it has fuse protection, which was not added to this unit. So the old board has been removed, new board's in, going to get it wired up. All right, I've got the power supply boards installed. This is the customer unit. This is the swap meet special. Now you can see that these boards still have the Black Beauty caps. So if you're working on one of these preamps and you want to keep those old caps in, there's something you need to do first. You take a DC voltmeter and you're going to look at the output jacks of the preamp and make sure that there is no DC voltage present. So let me flip this thing on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I right, just powered up the preamp. It's going to take a little bit for it to warm up. But what you want to do is watch the DC level. You sure don't want to have DC voltage going into your power amp. 
that'd be a very bad thing. So take a look at this output. I'm already seeing 14 volts DC present on that jack. Let's take a look at the other channel. There I only have 144 millivolts. So back to this channel where we saw the 14 volts. I'm going to move the base control. And look at there. That voltage is dancing around. Let's go to the schematic. I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong. All right, here is one channel of the PAS preamp. Now we are seeing DC voltage on the audio output. So if you trace that back, you'll see that base control. Remember I was moving that back and forth and the voltage was changing with it. If you follow the wiper arm up and over, there is a 0.02 coupling cap coming off of that 12AX7. So you got high voltage here. You should have no voltage here because that cap is supposed to block the DC. But I bet you that one of these black beauties has shorted out. So here are the 0.02 microfarad caps that I just showed you on the schematic that go to those output jacks. So one of these is more than likely shorted. Let's check it with the ohmmeter. So I got the multimeter set at 0 to 600 ohm scale. Short my leads. You'll see it's working. Let's check our caps. So here is one of the 0.02 microfarads. Look at there. Direct short. Here is the other channel. Not shorted. So we do have a shorted 0.02 microfarad cap. Let's change that out and see if our DC voltage goes away. So I installed two Mallory 0.02 microfarad caps. You can see we do not have a short anymore. Here is that old cap that was installed. Directly shorted. Let's fire back up. Check for DC voltage on the output jacks. All right, let's recheck that DC voltage on the output jacks. So I've got the preamp on and warmed up. Got about 0.1 millivolt on that channel. And 0.5 millivolts on that one. So there's no high level DC present. So that one cap was causing the problem. But remember, this thing is still full of those black beauties. To do it right, you need to change them all. All right, that's a wrap on the tech tips for the Dynakit PAS preamp. If you're interested in one of these boards to rebuild yours, you can find these on dlabelectronics.com or shoot me an email for more information. Next task, a pair of Dynakit monoblocks in need of DLab's assistance. We'll see you.